OM5 has only one custom mode in mode dial. I wish there were more, but there is a workaround and I will let you know what it is. Hi, it's Peter here and let's get right into the business. But before we get into the business, let's hear a few words of the sponsor of this video, which is my one-on-one -on -one sessions with you. I have had one-on-one -on -one sessions, quite a few with you guys about photography, about your camera and some chit chat. If you want to learn more about photography or you want to learn more about your camera, hit the link in the description down below where you can purchase one-on-one -on -one sessions. I will contact you and we will set up a time where we can have one-on-one -on -one over Zoom. But let's get right into the business now and for real. I've been using OM5 for some time now. I had one from OM system when it was launched a few, few weeks before, and then I returned it when I got my own in January this year. And it has been my number one camera for travels and all kinds of uh, everyday photography and my leisure time photography. I just love the, uh, not the lens, the camera so much that I, I, I just want to keep it with me all the time when I go. And I have almost the 20 millimeter f1.4 pro lens glued into it. I've used it the most with that camera. And someone asked me that, what is my opinion about OM system now? What's my honest opinion with OM system right now and with the OM1 and OM5 after I've, I'm not an ambassador anymore? And I've always answered, well, it hasn't changed. Why would it? Because lots of you thought that I was saying good things about the cameras because I was an ambassador. No, that wasn't true. I was an ambassador because the cameras were good. And I still feel the same way. That hasn't changed. Why would it? Why would I change my mind? Beats me. But, well, there's the answer, so stop asking, please. But of course there are things that could be better, and this video is one thing that could be better, and I will give you a solution how to solve that small problem. First of all, as I said, the mode dial has only one custom mode. But you might want to need different ones for different shooting scenarios and different genres. I have set up my street photography settings and uh, store them on C1 that I can access with the mode dial quickly. That's a good good way of doing it. But if I need some other settings, then I can just turn it, the camera back to A and it will use the latest settings that, I, that was used before I turn the mode dial to C. And that's kind of like the second one. It will, or, or the settings will remain what you have used before you go to a custom mode. I think that's, that's a clever thing. And switching from A to C is slightly a long way, or there are a lot of clicks when you do that. So I have assigned the ISO button on the back of a camera to turn on the C1 settings. So I don't have to touch the mode dial at all on this occasion. I just press the ISO button and it will use the C1 settings. And when I want to go back to aperture priority, I just press ISO again and voila, I'm back to the settings that I was used before I went to C1. I think that's a very clever way. So the camera actually stores the settings that you have last used. This is probably with other cameras too, but since we don't have that many custom mode places in the mode dial, this is the workaround. And also I use Live ND quite a bit. And Live ND works only on shutter priority and manual mode because it's all about the shutter speed. So what I do is I have Live ND on and when I switch the aperture priority to shutter priority, I will have Live ND on. And when I switch back, the Live ND goes off because I'm on aperture priority where it doesn't work. Of course, there is this downside that if I go and want to use manual mode, it will have Live ND on and I might not want to have that. That's why I have set it so that I can turn it off and on from expose a compensation button on top of the camera. So there we have three different settings that I have used and that uh, like a set of settings has worked really well for me. If I want to use Live ND, I just turn it to set a priority, it will be on and then I can go back to aperture priority and if I want to go to custom settings one, I just press ISO button. And if I need more uh, custom settings, then I can assign another button for it. But this way that I've used it, I only use one a custom mode that I need or custom setting that I need. It works perfect, perfectly for me. And I will give you an extra setting or extra thing after a few words. Of course, like I said, it should be better if there were 
more custom uh, settings on the mode dial. And when, since there's only one, you need to use this workaround, which has worked totally fine with me. No problem with that. It's just something that you need to do. If, if there is a problem with the camera, I always try to solve it instead of, you know, mocking the camera or, or something like that. You know, I try to solve the problem. And if I get a solution, I will tell you about it too. And it could be a good thing if it was possible from the menu to set, for example, S SCN, for example, to custom mode 2, C2, for example. It is possible with EM10 Mark II, but unfortunately they have not added that feature to later cameras. I don't know why, because that would be the great thing, because I don't use these art modes or SCN mode at all, never. So I could totally have them like C2 and C3, for example. But unfortunately, it's not possible. That is a wish that I hope that OM system makes because that would make the camera even better. But as I said, having a workaround has worked quite well for me. And then the extra tip, that is the FN lever switch. And there are three different modes that you can set that. And if you have it on mode one, it will change the dial function. So it will change the two top dials to something else that you can set whatever you want. If you have it on mode two, it will switch between different type of AF modes, AF target mode or AF target point according to F and lever position. And the target can be selected. And there is a set where you can choose which one or if you want to have them all. And then mode three, which I use is assigning in position one, it follows the mode dial setting, what you have on the mode dial and position two, it will switch to video mode. And what's good about it is it will switch to video mode with shutter speeds and everything and the video uh, quality that you have chosen. So when I go back, I will have the photographic settings with the shutter speeds that I last used. So I think that that's a perfect way of doing hybrid shooting. Of course, there is the problem if there's really a bright light, then the shutter speed 160th to 150th of a second is, is too long. So of course there is slight problems with that if because it doesn't have a built-in ND filters for video. But in darker conditions, let's say that a venue indoors and all that, it, it works really well to switch back and forth with video and stills. And that also works very well in travel photography if you occasionally want to take a video of a place and then just switch it with the F and lever and you're good to go. I hope this video was helpful for you and I do have some videos about OM5 settings over there. And the street photography settings that I have on C is also there. There's a video about it and I think that is a very clever way of shooting streets because it has some unique features, you know, and one that can be used very effectively. But hey, thanks for watching and bye for now.